Hello, my friends. Welcome to the metal shop. As you can see, we've made a little bit of progress. Sorry that uh, I did not take you along the ride with me, but I just kind of got inspired and got some stuff done. So you can see we've got the dash installed and I got the brace, it's a big mess in here. I got the brace installed. This came from Factory 5 and it mimics the original AC Cobra brace, which was actually part of the frame to kind of support their dash, which was really made of very thin aluminum and it was actually, you know, kind of necessary for them. So I have that done. I did not rivet it to the tunnel I use uh, rib nuts or nut certs so that it could be removed. And one thing I didn't think of is that this entire stanchion, this brace, it moves back and forth slightly. And I'm not sure if it's going to affect the doors. Now, this thing moving back and forth, that's great. On slots, it doesn't really matter. Only I have, have pinned it in one spot to the transmission tunnel here. And I suppose what I can do, if necessary, is... It's hard to see there, you can see the bolt there. I can slot out these bolts in this brace so that the, I can still move that, this entire big stanchion here uh, back and forth if I need to. So what I'm doing today is I'm working on the oil temperature gauge and the water temperature gauge, which are mechanical gauges, and they include this, this heavy wire, which is it's really a pain, and they have these actual sensors. Um, so what I've done, is I've drilled an inch and three eighths hole there. And I believe that's gonna be a good spot. Um, it's just here. It won't interfere with the gas pedal linkage, which will be above it. And I can run the oil temperature probe right down to the oil pan and the water, or the, yeah, the water temperature I can run right up here to the intake manifold. So I had to wait until I ordered these from McMaster Car. I had to get the right, um, grommets here and these are these go for for a three sixteenths wall and these are i believe these are one inch so that the um, probes will fit in through them and i'm also going to run the capillary tube for the oil pressure switch here through the same grommet and it goes uh over here there's and it actually feeds i got a nice copper kit from autometer nice copper line kit so what I'm doing is I'm going to put the oil temperature probe right into the oil pan. You're probably not going to be able to see it. There's pretty low light there. Um, there's a probe in the stock Mustang GT pan, uh, which is here, that they use. And that's how I can tell this was a GT because it came with the low oil sensor. What I had to do was I had to find an adapter that goes from the 20 millimeter metric threads that Ford used, even back in the 80s, that's so weird, to adapt to a 3 8 NPT, which is what these probes are. So I did find this from Phoenix Fuel Systems. It, this was 10 or $11 plus shipping, so it's like $20. This is the gasket that came on the low oil sensor. So. I can screw this right in. I've got some thread sealant here. I can screw the probe into that and the water temp. And then I'm going to kind of, I'm gonna to have to coil up this because I'm gonna have a lot of excess and keep it you know, nice and mounted out of the way. And here I drilled a hole right here in this support um, so I can coil up the excess wire here. So that's uh, what I've got going on today. Pretty happy with how the gauges came out. Um, I do have to mount the uh, the switches for the fresh air pull levers there, you know, kind of like a bicycle shifting cable or a brake cable in each one of those. Still got a long, long, long ways to go, but came out, came out really nicely. I am super, super happy with it. So I'm gonna get, uh, get to moving, uh, you know, wiring, whatever, hooking up these, uh, these sensors. And you can tell these still have the tape on them when they came from Superformance and one of their Cobras, the guy never, never used the gauges. He went right to a modern gauge and these have never been installed. So I'm gonna have to pull this tape off and install these gauges and uh, I'll bring you back once uh, I'm done finagling with that. All right, so got these capillary tubes, whatever you wanna call these things, all neatly spooled up here. Going down through the grommet that you can see there. Sorry, kinda, kinda low. Low light. 
There she is. And I'm glad the grommet fit very tightly, considering I was a little worried because of drilling the hole. I couldn't get the drill in here. It was on an angle, so I thought that would make it a little oval. But anyway, got the uh, water temp sensor in. And down there it goes to the oil temp. Uh, so what I'm doing now is there's that auto meter kit I was talking about for the oil pressure. And this is a obviously a kit for mechanical oil pressure. The pressure goes up this tube to the back of the gauge. So what we have to do here is for the Fox bodies, they have an electronic gauge and this is the sensor here. And I already loosened this up with a, I believe it's a 9 16th wrench. So I'll take this off. Oops, we dropped it. Didn't fall in the oil pan, which is nice. And there you can see where we're going to put the oil pressure tube. And this fitting will go in there. And then we're going to have a kind of a compression fitting with the tube and go up through the firewall. So let's get this going on here. All right, so we get the oil pressure line run here and the male fitting goes on this side into the female that you saw me put into the regular oil pressure sender here on the 302 and the little tip is <laughs> install the fitting into the engine and then install the tube with the compression fitting onto that otherwise you're going to be like me and you're trying to spin the whole all of the slack uh, line so here we did it right the fitting is on the back of the gauge. There's the compression sleeve, whatever you want to call it. And there's the nut here. And this is the female end on this side that we're going to screw in here. And we're going to compress this fitting to make a leak proof seal here. And I have some excess uh, that I'm going to probably, I'll do, I'll wind it up in here. I may do one one loop out there just to make sure that the thing doesn't get kinked and doesn't get um, messed up. But right there, that's how that's how it's supposed to be. Back of the gauge gets this male fitting. There's your compression fitting. There's your nut. And then this is tight. We're going to put this on and compress it to, again to make that leak proof seal in that order. All right. Cool. So got that wrapped up. Does run behind the headers. Shouldn't matter. It's oil pressure. If it gets super hot, oil's going to be hot anyway. Goes up through there, through the grommet. I'm probably gonna have to stuff some dum dum, you know, some sealant into that hole there. It's a little big. Got to come up here. Got a little bit of slack. I mean, you could have. I could have cut this off, but I'd rather have the excess. Got a zip tied here. Runs right and nice into the back of the gauge. Not as straight as I would have liked it, but it's nice. It's a it's a gradual curve anyway. So yeah. Got that done and show you the next project here is <laughs> gonna be the handbrake. I'm gonna get rid of this one that I don't like. This is the style that the Cobras came with mounted to the tunnel. You see them, every picture of a Cobra, it looks like the brake is on because the thing's sticking straight up and down. So this is essentially what it would look like when it's off. And then you just pull it back, very simple. Just a simple lever action. I don't know, and you drill one hole for the, you know, the mechanism to go through. The mechanism here to go through. A couple more mounting holes. I made a plate to put on the back side. So this is just going to sit there thusly. I could probably even still use the cables that I have. But I'd really like to use those nice low-car cables, but that's it. And, you know, ratchets and locks into place. So I'm going to have to take that out. No big deal. Um, the bolts can stay. I'll make them flush. I bought some... Uh, oh, those aren't them right there. Where are they? Um, there they are. I bought some flush Allen head 3 8 bolts. That will actually hold the tub to the body because if you remember I threaded those holes in. So I can just make those flush, do away with these, fill the thing with fiberglass. And we're gonna go, and that's from an MG. But this is the style that they used on the AC Cobras. So we're gonna do that next. There's a nice view of all the excess capillary tubes and sensor wires, whatever you wanna call them there. Gotta dump some oil, you can see down there. 
I dumped some oil back in here. I had to, when I took that uh, oil sensor out, the uh, low oil <laughs> sensor from uh, Ford, I took that out and it's above, it's, uh, it's underneath the oil line, so we lost a little bit of oil. But I planned on that. All right, so one of the other things that I've mentioned, I brought it up a couple times, was that I was going to change out the handbrake for this more traditional style. This is from an MG um, handbrake that's more appropriate for the Cobra. Um, you see I've removed the low car, you know, the base, the regular floor mount style. You can go back to those videos where I installed that and refer to that. I'm gonna have to plug up that hole in the floor. You know, these bolt into the frame. Um, Attach the tub to the frame, blah, 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 so whatever. There's the drive shaft safety loop, and that's here because I'm going to attach one of the brackets for the handbrake cable to the drive shaft safety loop, which will mount right in that area there. The cables are going to kind of run right through here. So you see I've drilled a hole, a couple of holes, three holes here in the tunnel for the handbrake simple how this works and I've taken off the here, let me show you that real quick I've taken off the cam um, it is right here this bolts on and it's so simple the way it works you know you crank the handle this pulls the brake cables you know you put a clevis pin here it's very simple and if I'd done my research I would have gone this route anyway so I test fit this and you can see this scrape here, this, you know, for this, uh, I don't know what you call that, the locking cam there deal um, stuck out a little bit more. I actually ground it down a little bit. It had been ground down. I ground it down a little bit more. I fabricated this at work. This is just a nice eighth inch panel. I drilled the whole side. I drilled out to mount on the back side for the bolts to go through rather than mounting just in fiberglass. And as soon as I mounted this up, I realized, oh, I need a spacer here because the mechanism won't work. It's dragging on the wall here. So I beat my head because the problem is this is seven eighths of an inch. And what you, you know, normally what I would think is I'll just stack up a couple washers here and create a spacer. But then you have an air gap in here. That's no good. So. I'm just racking my brains and I'm like, why don't I just make another plate just like this one, but space it out? So I did. This is a quarter inch and it's going to be a really nice spacer that's going to go right there. And I just primed and painted these, you know, so they don't rust. Um, and this will mount thusly, giving room for the mechanism to work. So let's get, uh, let's get this bolted on real quick and see how we do. All right, so just wanted to show you this real quick. Probably gonna have to go to the hardware store and get some longer bolts since I used that spacer, which I didn't take into account. I was able to get a lock washer on one, on this top one, but for whatever reason, I'm not sure why I could not <laughs> get one on this bolt. Probably a situation where they had two different sized, different length bolts in the same drawer at the hardware store, which actually happens pretty frequently. People, don't do that. Put the bolts back, back in the right slot <laughs> you know put them right back in the right drawer it's so annoying but what i'm going to do real quick is i am going to loosen these up because i what i meant to do but i wanted to show you this anyway so i was going to slide the boot here actually behind the plate and cover this up real nice so let's get this loosened up slide that back there and see how we do this is not really the most ideal boot for this ideally i'd have to have something made that was longer that would kind of go to the floor here. I do have it pinched behind that spacer and I actually even put a bolt through it to hold it in place. Again, there's a lot of different things I can do here. You know, there's gonna be carpet. That's This is gonna have to be removed for carpet purposes and you know, maybe I'll get a larger boot um, to put on there. But this, and the, it kind of pinches a little bit too, I'll have to kind of do something to, I mean, it still functions, still does what it's supposed to do. And it looks the part way better than any floor mounted or tunnel mounted um, handbrake lever. I do have the cam 
mounted in there as well. Um, if we go around here, maybe we can see it. Can you see it down in there? Right there. You see the cam. I'll try and get a little closer so we can see how that's going to work. Sorry, terrible video work there, but there you go. There you see the cam. Pull the lever forward, cam swings. We pull the lever backwards towards the rear of the car, cam swings to the front of the car. The cables are gonna, I'm gonna do some kind of a little mount in here. And again, I'm gonna have that little guide mounted on the drive shaft safety loop in this area. Be a nice straight pull, nice and short. Easy, I wish I'd done it this way in the first place. And look at that, even with all this junk in my messy work area, that looks like an AC Cobra handbrake should. So my friends, as always, thanks for watching. We did the, uh, plumbed in some of the gauges. We got the handbrake straightened out. I will do a separate video with the routing of the e-brake cables. Remember, I do have those really nice low car cables that I'm probably gonna end up using because these generic ones that came with the car are junk. Anyway, as always, my friends, I thank you for watching. Please give me a like. Please, if you're new to the channel, give me a subscribe. Leave me a comment. I still respond to all comments. Just ask that you be constructive. All right, my friends, take care. Bye-bye.